Hello, welcome back to the woods. And welcome back to a video. What about what's in my pack? So next weekend, I'm out with Operation Jackdaw, um, doing some work with guys with PTSD. So what I thought I'd do is I'd share with you what gear I'm gonna be taking along. But what I've tried to do uh, is use as much army surplus stuff as possible, stuff that's relatively easy to get hold of. But at the same time, I've tried to keep the weight down as much as I can. So we'll start off with the actual pack itself. Some of you might recognize it. This is a long back PLC Bergen from, uh, from back in the late 80s, 90s. So it's the olive green color. It's got no side pockets on it. And this one I've modified slightly. What I've done is I've taken the, the lid pocket off because it actually has one inside the lid as well. And then on the sides, I've put little mesh side pockets. Uh, and this is a fairly common tailoring job from what I gather. I think it's JJ's or one of the, the big companies. Um, they will put mesh side pockets on the side of a PLC Bourbon. So that might be something that you might want to look at if this is a mod that you want adding onto your one. Apart from that, it's a reasonably standard Bergen if you want details of how I did it but if you go back through my videos there is a video uh, about how I did this so cost wise these don't actually cost a great deal of money look around on eBay uh, and various army surplus sites and you can pick these up sort of between 30 and 50 pounds and it's a good sized rucksack with the side pockets on it it takes up to 100 litres, so it's a really good year-round pack that you can use. So we'll start with the stuff that I've got on the outside. And those items are all things that I'm going to need to get to through the course of the day. So I want them readily accessible. So obviously something that you are going to need through the course of the day is your water bottle. So in the side here, I have one black 58 pattern water bottle. Absolutely bomb proof these things, and they don't cost a whole lot of money. If you're in the market for a good, strong, durable water bottle, you can't go far wrong with one of these. Also in there, I have this. And this is the Crusader mug that fits underneath it. And this, oh, this is a superb bit of kit. Heavy duty stainless steel. Again, bomb proof. On the inside, it's marked up with graduation so that you can use it and you can measure liquids in it. Really good set of butterfly handles on it. And this makes a superb, not only cup, but also a very, very good cooking pot. On this particular one, what I've also done is I've drilled a tiny little hole on either side so I can suspend a piece of wire over the top and turn this one into uh, a bail handled pot which if I'm cooking over a fire if I'm staying somewhere for a couple of days and want to make myself a cooking jig then this can be used suspended from that cooking jig most of the time however I tend to just shove it into the side of the fire and this broad front on it allows water to heat up really really quick Moving over onto the other side, well, over here I've got all manner of stuff. So, uh, I've got this one. Some of you might recognize this. This is my Dutch Army poncho. Again, a bomb proof piece of kit. Yes, there are lighter out there. Yes, there are more compact ones out there. But this 
is a great, great bit of kit. Not only is it a waterproof layer that will cover me and my rucksack, but this also makes up my shelter system. I've got one length of cord on there with a toggle. So if I want to set it up as a quick play point, I can because the inside I've also got my pegs in there as well. So shelter system, waterproof layer, Dutch poncho, great, great item. Also in here, tools. So here I have one, and if you're a regular viewer, one Norland hatchet. A great item. Particularly this time of year, I'm more likely to be wanting to split bits of wood. In the summer you can get away with a little fire. Now we're into autumn. Yep, I'm probably gonna need something so I can split damp wood down to get to the dry insides. So having a small hatchet makes a lot of sense. This complements the other tools that I'm carrying on me. So I also have one open L folding saw and then my little survival necklace and on there I've got my ferro rod, I've got my whistle, uh, one of these little tiny micro torches and my open L garden knife. I don't need to carry a a bigger, heavier knife this time of year as I'm carrying that little axe. And the axe will do most things and the fine work my little old pillow knife will do. It's also good for food prep. Moving into my front pocket. Again, this is stuff that I need through the course of the day. And in here, well, cooking stuff and making into a cup of tea. One set of leather work gloves, handy for handling hot pans and protecting my hands when I'm out gathering wood, etc. So a good set of work gloves. Also got in there one lid that fits on top of my Crusader mug. Again, this one's been slightly modified. It's got a little D-ring on the top. And I'll put some strain holes in there so that I can use it in conjunction with the cup for straining the liquid off if I'm cooking stuff. So my lid. Also I've got in here one folding windbreak, quite useful this time of year. Also acts as a little bit of a heat reflector. Fuel bottle, a little bit of mess. One bushcraft toggle rope and this is my modified one there is a video about all about these it's useful for helping me set my shelter up but it's also really useful for simple things like a safety line or if I need to suspend my, my rucksack up off the ground all of these things it can be used for it's a great great useful bit of kit look up the video Also in here, I've got my little stoves and I've got my little polymath stealth stove and my wooden spoon. So that's the outside of my pack done. I've got a couple of bits in the lid and where I took the external lid pocket off, I store a few bits and pieces just inside there and in here one water filtration bag notepad cup and one of my little puck stoves and that's the top pocket pretty much all sorted. And those external pockets, that's everything I need during the course of the day until I actually get to where I'm going and set camp up. All of that stuff, well, that's sitting inside. But when I do stop, what I'm probably gonna need is to get the light on, 
So what I've got here is a, a little dry bag. And if I stop after dark, I'm going to need my head torch. My head torch and a few other items are all stashed safely away in here. You'll notice that it's tethered to the pack. Small bags get easily lost. So make sure I don't. This one's got a nice bright colour, but it's also tied on to my rucksack. Opening it up, in here we have a splash map of the area that I'm working in. One Nebo Micro head torch. A great little item, very, very lightweight, rechargeable, lots of different modes. And the great thing is, you don't have to cycle through all of the modes. Whatever you left it on is what will come back on when you switch it on next. So if you were on red light, it will come up as red light. If you were on high beam, next time you switch it on, it will come up as high beam. So it's a really good little item and it's super, super lightweight. Also, One lighter, again, brightly marked up. One brightly coloured bandana. Some hand sanitizer, which, yes, I like to keep my hands clean, but it's also useful for getting a fire going in an emergency. One uh, waterproof match case, complete with needle and thread in there as well. One of my FUBAR headbands. This is a something for carrying your uh, your torch on and using it as a, a head strap, but it also doubles up as an emergency tourniquet. So a useful bit of kit. Last couple of items. One bundle, two mil paracord, and one candle stub. Again, useful item for getting your fire going or for light and all those other things and cord well, you can never have too much cord and a little bit of spare paracord is an excellent excellent addition to your kit so next up we're actually going to go into the main rucksack itself now this i want to keep dry so everything in here <clears throat> I only get out, well, usually once my shelter is up. Everything else is sealed away so it doesn't get wet. So opening this up. We have another one of these little orange dry bags. And this one, well, when you stop, you usually want to start piling some extra layers on because you start to get cold particularly this time of year. So in here, I've got one. This is one of those little Arctis wind shirts, which my wall top is excellent this time of year and through the winter and into the spring. It does keep a bit of the wind out, but this completely blocks the wind out and it's just a really good, useful extra layer. Also in here, well, when that heat escapes out of our head. So, what I tend to do when I stop, this one comes off, this one goes on. So my little wool beanie. Also in here, a couple of other items. Again, all stuff that's going to keep you warm. One head over, and this is one of those really lightweight merino tubes that just fits over your head and works as a scarf. I've also got one little pair of Mericlon gloves, which are super toasty warm, but they also go under my work gloves. It's a layering system for your hands. They're very good, very cheap, brilliant. If you haven't got some, dash out and get some. A little set of wrist overs. Again, stop heat escaping from your wrists. And then last but not least, a little midge net, which seems like an odd thing to be carrying at this time of year, but it's a very good net for gathering things. So if I see fungi when I'm out, I can gather them up and pop them into here. I can also, in the winter, fill this full of snow, suspend it by the fire, and the snow will start to melt and it drips out through the bottom. So 
your midge head net, not just for the summertime. And that's everything in my Next up, I've got this. Some of you might recognize this. This is my little Dutch Army Gore-Tex smock liner. Uh, and it makes a very useful additional layer. It can also be worn over this underneath a poncho if it is absolutely hammering down. Nothing is getting through that combination. This can also be worn underneath my wind top as well. So the wind top gives the delicate Gore-Tex a little bit of protection. <clears throat> and I've worn that in some quite heavy weather, that little combo of the wind shirt with this Gore-Tex underneath. And it works brilliantly well. Next. It's all coming out now. One British Army Gore-Tex bivy bag and this is the old DPM pattern ones. The new ones, the MTP ones, they're exactly the same layer. They are massive, they're huge. You can use them as their own mini tent. Uh, I did a video which uh, if you go back through my videos you'll see it. It's a very simple modification but you can turn one of these into, well not a hooped bivy bag but not far off and it's a great great item. It can also be used in its primary use which is obviously as like your sleeping bag cover. There's plenty of room, not only to sleep in, but you can also get changed, do all your admin inside the bag. It's a great, great item. Yes, it's a little bit heavier, but you get so much more than you do with some of the lightweight bags. Look them up, good bit of kit. Next up, all my water treatment stuff. You saw I had my little filtration bag. Uh, in here I've also got one of the wacky wacky um, water gravity feed systems which all centers around one of these. Very good item for if you're out for a couple of days and you need to process water. For gathering the water in I've got this another 58 water bottle. This one is marked up with red lines so I know once this one's filled, this is contaminated water. So the red stripes are there to remind me that this water still needs treating. And all I do with it is I put it through the gravity filter, <coughs> feed it out, and when it comes out, it goes into my other water bottle as safe water. So water collection stuff, very, very important. Next up, well, we go on to more of our base camp stuff. So I have one inflatable air mattress. This is one of the little Alp kits, uh, cloud-based ones. Um, and I've had this one a few years now. I've never had to repair it. It's been an all round great bit of kit. It makes sleeping on the ground reasonably comfortable. And this takes no size, uh, takes up no space in the pack. Doesn't weigh a great deal. And for the amount of comfort that it gives, it's a great, great item. Next up, well, next up, this is for once everything's up and I want to settle down for the night. So in here, I've got my warm layer. And this is a, a Dutch army surplus fleece jacket. Now, these were made by Heli Hansen. The fibre field jacket was very popular back in the day. And Heli Hansen made them for the Dutch government. But they made them have a, a polyamide wool mix. I think it's something like a 80% wool. They are lovely and warm. It doesn't matter if you get them wet. They're super durable. They cut really long, so they keep your backside warm. They've got some loops on the sleeves. I've had this one years it's been out with me all over the place and it is a great great item you can pick them up they don't cost a great deal of money if you go on forces uniform kit or surface at, uh, and outdoors they all do these and they are great they don't actually weigh a great deal they do compress reasonably well and they are a really good item
and I haven't gone for a surplus item on this. This is my little one wind outdoors top quilt. And yes, I could have put one of my sleeping bags in. This takes up a little bit less space. It weighs probably about the same as the, the jungle bag. Uh, it's not quite as compact as the jungle bag, but it's pretty good down to about five degrees, which autumn time, you might get a night that's a bit colder, but that said, I've got all this extra kit and I'm inside a bivy bag. So yeah, until it gets well down below freezing, this works out pretty well. And you get a reasonable weight saving as well. So check these out. As I said, if you didn't want to use one of these, then you could just use any sleeping bag. And then finally, inside here, rolled up, a standard foam roll mat. And what I tend to do with that is I roll it up and put it inside and it acts as a tube that I can insert all my kit in. So that if I've packed it badly or if I've packed in a hurry and there's lumps and bumps, they don't stick into me because this extra padding all helps. It also gives me a layer that I can put on the ground that I can either sit on or I can put my bivy bag down on top before I put my little cloud base inflatable mattress on there. That way my cloud base is less likely to get punctured. So yeah, a little top tip, roll your roll mat, put it inside, it helps protect your back, it helps stiffen your pack up and it gives you that extra layer of insulation at night on the ground. So there you go, that is my loadout for this time of year, sort of <clears throat> autumn, not quite winter, not quite into the zeros. Weight wise, weighs in at about 18 pounds without food. So weight wise, it's not too bad at all. And this covers me for an overnight or a couple of days out. And I've got everything there that I need. I'm protected from the environment. I've got all the kit there to keep me warm. I've got tools. I've got everything that I need. All in that one little package. And the joy of using surplus stuff as well, it, it doesn't actually cost a huge amount of money. So it makes quite a bit of sense. It's just picking and choosing which ones. A lot of people say, well, oh, I'll be surplus. Is really heavy well yeah some of it is <clears throat> but if you mix and match between the lighter weight stuff the more compact stuff along with the stuff that's going to give you the most benefit from the army surplus stuff well you're getting the best of both worlds i guess so there you go that's what i carry at this time of year when i'm out in the woods and as i said it covers me for all bases now if you enjoyed this video then remember hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't already please like and subscribe to the channel down below in the description box you will find links down there to my social media pop over there give me a follow both instagram and facebook and there's also a link down there to my patrons page so if you want to become a patron uh, and help support the channel then please please do and there's also a link down there to my etsy shop over there you will find the green craft patches you will also find from time to time a few other bits and pieces which includes and a lot of people say why oh, you didn't have any first aid gear well i do i always have first aid gear because in my pocket i've always got my cuts kit on my person it's got all my bits and pieces in there now over on the etsy shop next week these will be coming up the new little cuts kits so keep your eye on the shop you might get in there and get yourself one of these they are a great great bit of kit if you want to guarantee getting one well go over and become a patron because they get offered them first anyway i think that's everything i've been neil and until next time stay safe in the woods